The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. Welcome to KXAN News Today. Here are your Wednesday morning headlines. Classified documents, even more, discovered at the home of former Vice President Mike Pence. According to his attorneys, a small number of documents were inadvertently taken to Pence's Indiana home after he left the vice presidency. Now, the attorneys also say that he is fully cooperating with the investigation. President Biden announced that Vice President Kamala Harris will travel to Monterey Park, California today. She's going to honor the lives of those killed in recent mass shootings. Between Saturday and Monday, there were three mass shootings across California. You might see and you might smell it, the smoke in southwest Austin near FM 1826 and FM 967 today. Austin Water is conducting a prescribed burn in the area. If the burn area changes, you're going to be updated on their website and we'll update you on our website, kxan.com. So the rain is gone, the wind and the cooler temperatures are here, left behind for you to deal with this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sally Hernandez. And I'm Erica Brennis. And for Tom Miller, meteorologist Kristen Curry is joining us this morning. and getting us off to a chilly start this Wednesday. Yeah, definitely cold for sure. You wanna make sure you've got that heavy coat with you. Let me show you what's going on when it comes to the radar. Looking a little different than what we had yesterday at this time. We are completely dry. Yes, we've got some cloud cover. Those clouds, not very thick, and they won't stay very long. We've got plenty of sunshine on the way. Live look outside. We'll see landscape supplies, weather camera, a dry sky to start our day. And temperature-wise, technically, our thermometer readings are in the upper 30s to low 40s. But you factor in a little bit of a breeze that we're seeing right now. Brings your current wind chill or your feels like temperatures down to the 20s and burn it below freezing soon. Stab of Mason and Fredericksburg feels like 37 here in Austin. And then we've got those feels like temperatures or your wind chills in the low to mid 30s across the eastern county. So something to keep in mind. It's it's deceivingly cold outside this morning. We do warm up back into the upper 50s today, still below average and still a little cool underneath that dry and sunny sky. Our rain chances put on hold for today and tomorrow. Eventually this weekend into next week, tracking our next disturbance that has the potential of bringing a little more wet weather to Central Texas. We'll talk more about those details coming up in your first warning forecast. Thank you. The woman charged in the killing of an Austin mother and kidnapping her newborn baby is expected to enter a guilty plea. That's going to happen next Tuesday. The Travis County District Attorney spoke about Megan Faramuska's murder plea deal yesterday. It calls for her to serve 55 years in prison and waive her right to appeal. We think that is a a significant sentence that sends a message to our community that we will not tolerate acts of violence in Travis County. And we're hopeful that um, that this conclusion will allow those families um, some closure and allow them to begin to um, to heal. That's DA Jose Garza there. Veramusca is accused of killing Heidi Broussard back in 2019. Now, Broussard disappeared from South Austin and was found dead in the trunk of a car near a Houston area home. Her baby was found alive and is in good condition. Broussard's mom, Tammy, plans to be in court next Tuesday when the judge looks over the plea deal. And she told KXAN that she wants to see Veramusca face to face and she wants closure. I have a big portrait of a Heidi and Shane and the kids. I'm bringing that and hopefully they'll let me put it in the courtroom so that she can see, you know, what she's done. Something that will remind her of what she's done. And I don't have any ill feelings towards her. God has set me at peace and we just have to get this done. We've been following this case for you since it started. So for more on the case and the investigation into Broussard's disappearance and her death, find this story on KXAN.com's homepage. Workers at state mental hospitals and living centers will get a pay raise. The Health and Human Services Commission wants to shore up understaffing issues and high turnover. HHSC wants to fill nearly 4,000 vacancies across the system. The pay raise will start nurses at up to $90,000 a year. Psychiatric nursing assistants and direct support professionals are currently earning around $15 to $16 an hour. After this raise, they'll start at $17 to $21 an hour, depending on their experience. 
The raises kick in on March 1st. A local nonprofit that's built a community of tiny homes for people experiencing homelessness is going to get tens of millions of dollars to expand. Travis County approved a contract with Mobile Loaves and Fishes yesterday worth $35 million in American Rescue Plan funding. A lot of money, and that money is going to help build roughly 640 housing units in the Community First Village. That's the Burleson Village they have in that area. And that's going to be in Southeast Austin near Burleson Road, along with the roads, utilities, and some of the other infrastructure going up. We should break ground in early uh, summertime. And then uh, to move people in, it will take us about two years of construction to get to that point. It's the county's first designation of the $110 million set aside already back in 2021 to build at least 2,000 housing units in the county. Now, we can tell you Mobile Loaves and Fishes started back in the late 1990s, been doing good work ever since, started as an outreach ministry at St. John Newman Catholic Church in Westlake. The group would pass out meals to people who were homeless around Austin. And then the Community First Village opened in 2015, providing affordable and permanent housing to those coming out of chronic homelessness. It also has a program called Community Works, and that gives people the opportunity to build skills and earn an income. Well, a new power plant to help alleviate peak demand is coming to Central Texas. The Lower Colorado River Authority, the LCRA, not telling us the location, though, of the new peaker plant, at least just yet. Now, these plants are designed to kick on within minutes of peak demand. They can shut off quickly when that demand eases up. And this plan will be able to provide 190 megawatts of dispatchable power to the state grid. The LCRA plans to have it operational in the year 2025. Now for added context here, this would be the second peaker plant for the LCRA. The first built in 2010 is a 184 megawatt natural gas fired facility in Fayette County, just north of LaGrange. The LCRA says it takes about 10 minutes to hit full capacity. So how much more money will your state educators earn in their paychecks? We'll find out. And what Ticketmaster is saying led to the Taylor Swift ticket debacle. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Your time right now, 440, looking live over I-35, the Whittlesea Landscape Company. Looks good. We're off to a quiet start at the traffic department, thankfully. Every Texas public school teacher could be getting a $15,000 raise. About time, right? The state is facing a teacher shortage because they never really get a big pay raise. Many teachers are still forced to get a second job in order to support themselves and their families due to our low salary. We have no excuse hoarding this surplus while educators and children are suffering is immoral. Austin State Representative James Tallarico, a former teacher himself, wrote the bill. Tallarico wants the state to use its record surplus, surplus of over $30 billion for the pay, pay bump. Legislators gave teachers a raise back in 2019, but a report from the Texas American Federation of Teachers Union says when you account for inflation, it's really like teachers haven't really had a salary. In fact, they say it's decreased by an average of 4%. KXAN spoke with another one of the state's big teachers union about Tallarico's proposal. The Texas State Teachers Association told us $15,000 is a great start, but more needs to change. Like I said, you know, uh, if the state of Texas is truly doing and wanting to do something about our teacher shortage, educator shortage, then we really need to look at why is it that we are below the national average? The union says higher salaries will help retain teachers, but they'd also like to see more educators input into crafting legislation. They also want help with benefits, saying teacher retirees haven't gotten a cost of living increase in years. Right now, it's unclear if Republicans will support Talabrico's plan, but both budget proposals in the House and Senate do support teacher pay raises. Well, after an officer shooting in Liberty Hill, a family's call for answers on why their son is dead.
This KXAN News Podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to ShelfGenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. Good morning to you in Granite Shoals as we take a live look at our camera over there. Cameras all over Central Texas to wake you up on this Wednesday, January the 25th. Well, the top executive from Ticketmaster and Live Nation telling senators yesterday that it was the robots that were part of last year's Taylor Swift ticket debacle. Blaming it on the bots. Uh Lawmakers grilled the company's president yesterday over whether the industry giant has an unfair competitive advantage, leading to price gouging that hurts customers and musicians. NBC's Alice Barr is on Capitol Hill where senators put executives on the spot. No price gouging, no more. Protests on Capitol Hill today as lawmakers grill the head of Ticketmaster's parent company over that Taylor Swift concert ticket meltdown that brought heartbreak worthy of one of the megastars hit songs. It was just a terrible process for a lot of people. Back in November, fans waited for hours online. We haven't used the bathroom. We haven't eaten. The system overloaded under unprecedented demand, forcing Ticketmaster to pause sales. The company blaming a bot attack. We need to do better and we will do better. The debacle renewed scrutiny on the industry giant and whether its merger with concert promoter Live Nation created an unfair competitive advantage. The central question in today's Senate Judiciary hearing featuring smaller competitors and artists. Is Ticketmaster a monopoly? Unequivocally. Yes, sir. Without a doubt. Yes, absolutely. Antitrust experts say customers pay the price. With higher ticket prices and fees, lower quality, less choice, and less innovation. Ticketmaster Live Nation denies it. We absolutely believe the ticketing business has never been more competitive. But while Ticketmaster bills itself as artist first, singer-songwriter Clyde Lawrence says the company's dominance leaves him with no leverage, telling senators how extra fees pile on. For your band to make six bucks out of a $42 ticket price... Yeah, that doesn't feel great. ...doesn't strike me as artist first. I would agree with that. Rare bipartisan agreement as lawmakers push for change to help fans shake off the soaring costs of seeing their favorite artists. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Ticketmaster, by the way, the world's largest ticket seller, processing 500 million tickets every year in more than 30 countries. When we dig deep here into the allegations that Live Nation and Ticketmaster, the merger created, um, so-called unfair advantage to some. The Justice Department allowed both companies to merge in 2010 as long as Live Nation agreed not to retaliate against concert venues for using other ticket companies for 10 years. In 2019, the department investigated and found that Live Nation had repeatedly violated that agreement. The department then extended the probation prohibition rather on retaliating against concert venues to 2025. Mm-hmm. So when he says that it's never been more, um, it's never been, it's you can compete to buy tickets. Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know who he's talking about because I know everybody else is competing against each other to buy these tickets. Yeah, Yeah. I'm so glad the spotlight is being shined on this. I was Mm -hmm. very personally affected by the Taylor (laughs) Swift ticket issue. We basically won the lottery and got through, but by a fluke, and it's about time. Yeah. No kidding. I mean, you know, for some people, this is a lifelong dream to go see their favorite artists in concert, you know? So the fact that you're already at a disadvantage from the get-go, mm-hmm. yeah, I can see why this is a big deal. Mm. Let me show you what's going on with your forecast here because the rain is gone, storm system moving out, left behind a little bit of cloud cover and some cold and windy conditions. Did you notice the winds last night? Man, it was rocking at my house. And I'll tell you what, the cold temperatures in combination with the wind making for a really uncomfortable comfortable start. We're in the 30s and 40s right now. These are your actual air temperatures. 39 Georgetown, 40 in Austin. Same thing in Bastrop, 41 in Lockhart. But when you factor in that 5 to 20 mile per hour wind, feels much colder out there. Our feels like temperatures or wind chill values are in the 20s and 30s. So you want to make sure you've got that heavy coat with you this morning. We're on our way to 57 degrees. Those northwest winds are about 10 to 20 miles per hour through the day. So we're going to be fighting even a little wind chill this afternoon. Here's a look at your afternoon highs 
Everybody in those mid to upper 50s today, maybe even a couple low 60s sneaking in there to the south. Sky conditions are going to stay on the quiet side. We've got sunshine from start to finish. I even think clouds are going to be hard to find today. It's just going to be dry and sunny everywhere you look. When can we expect change? Well, tomorrow is going to be almost a repeat of today, minus the wind. By Friday, here comes the cloud cover. Then we're going to be tracking a little disturbance in a cold front coming in. Saturday, the rain chances start to spread out. Sunday is when I think the front itself is going to push through here. You can see some of that scattered rain. And then even into Monday and Tuesday, we've got some rain chances to look forward to. So between now and the end of the day Tuesday, we could be in for another quarter to about three quarters of an inch of rainfall. As you can tell, areas along and east of I-35 will be favored for the best rainfall accumulation, but we still have some time to watch this. That's the good news. And yesterday, almost everybody got a good soaking. So we're going to spend some time to dry out today, tomorrow, and Friday. Breezy conditions today, highs in the upper 50s today and tomorrow, 60s Friday, Saturday. We'll start those rain chances at 30%, keep them at 20% for the end of the weekend into next week. Temperatures just a little cooler behind that cold front. Start next week in the 50s. Erica? Thanks, Kristen. The attorney for the young man killed by Liberty Hill Police is calling for transparency. An officer shot 21-year-old Jackson Lieber last week. And the attorney says Lieber's family called him because they couldn't get any answers. KXN's Brianna Hollis tells us more about the man police shot. She works to get answers from Liberty Hill Police. So many things we don't know. Robert Ranko represents the family of 21 year old Jackson Lieber, who a Liberty Hill police officer killed last week on Ranch Road 1869. He believes even if police can't share certain facts with the public at this point in the investigation, law enforcement should have more information to share with the family. 21 year old young man who was valedictorian of his high school class. He's never really been in trouble. DPS says Lieber got into a crash, wandered onto private property, and got in a fight with the people who live there. Troopers say Lieber then got in a fight with a Liberty Hill officer who responded, but have not said if Lieber had a weapon on him. It's not known at this time. I do know that there was a small altercation between the officer or some sort of altercation between the officer and the subject. What could have been the imminent threat that was posed by Jackson that would have justified the use of deadly force against him at that time. Since the night the shooting happened, we've been asking the Liberty Hill Police Department about body camera video or any similar incidents in the past, but they haven't answered those specific questions. As well as if there's any policy regarding the release of body camera video. Travis County DA Jose Garza, who is not involved in this case, pointed to other agencies that have clear protocols for police shootings, like APD, which releases body camera video within 10 billion business days. Crucial um, for the integrity of our criminal justice system that all of us be as transparent as we can be. Really haven't been given any meaningful information from anybody involved in this situation. Brianna Hollis, KXAN News. The officer who fired the deadly shots is Officer Esteban Gomez Sanchez. We also reached out to, the, to DPS about the shooting, but they said there is no update. We did want to let you know the Lieber family's attorney works for DC Lawyers. The firm advertises with KXAN. There are new bills in the works that could mean more people are being held accountable for the Uvalde school massacre. Just yesterday, it marked eight months since the shooting at Robb Elementary. Families of victims stood with Democratic Senator Roland Gutierrez as he talked about those bills yesterday. One would create a compensation fund for any Texas family who has been impacted by school shootings. Another bill would allow those impacted by the Uvalde shooting to sue the state or any of its state agencies. A third would ask Congress to repeal an act that shields gun manufacturers from liability. And then a fourth bill would end qualified immunity. So that's something that protects Texas peace officers from getting sued. I understand that that's challenging, but we have a legal system that works. You can sue a lawyer, you can sue a, uh, a, a doctor, you can sue, you name it. But you can't sue cops when they're negligent. It's astounding to me. Gutierrez says that he's actively talking with Republicans and he's going to need their support to get any of those bills passed as Republicans control both chambers. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning, all. Big 12 basketball schedule can be a bit funky. You play everyone twice in the season, but sometimes you play a team a second time before a different team a single time. Like a night ago, Longhorns looking for a season sweep of Oklahoma State. And the national champs were in the house. Volleyball team juiced. 
holding up some hardware. As far as basketball, defensive slugfest, the first time Cowboys and Longhorns did battle. A bit more offense a night ago. Horns doubling up Oklahoma State early. Christian Bishop, how about that footwork? Tough lay-in part of an 11-0 run, and he's flexing as he deserves. Six-point game with five left in the half. Marcus Carr, another tough lay-in, and the foul trying to extend the lead. Cowboys, though, hanging around, had a chance to tie it, but... Not so much when Sir Jabari Rice, yes, sir, I'll take three of these, 40 to 32. That'd be the score at the break. Second 20 minutes, UT up eight with about 10 to go. Timmy Allen, a couple of big and ones in the second half. This of the fadeaway variety. Cowboys still within 10 here, but look at Brock Cunningham just looking to set the screen and the glue guy splash from distance. Unexpected dagger from the local product. Career high, 15 points for number 30, Texas. Holds on. They move to 6-2 and two in Big 12 play. And a bit of Texas football news. After Brendan Marion left to be the offensive coordinator at UNLV, Texas has officially hired Chris Jackson as passing game coordinator and wide receiver coach for the Longhorns. We'll send it back to you. Thanks for joining KXAN News today. You can also listen to KXAN News nightly every weekday after 5.30 p.m. for in-depth coverage on what matters most to you.